Hi, Rat. I wanted to talk about microtransactions for a minute. I know it's like a topic that's done to death, but there's a new Diablo 4 mount that it's too expensive. There, there's, there's no other way for me to like put this. I wanted to talk about it because I'm curious about the method in which they're trying to market it. And I've been trying to put together in my head why Blizzard's method of monetization is so hostile while I'm okay with FF14's Mog Station because things are expensive on the Mog Station. I'm not going to pretend that they're not. Um, we can come over right now and look at them. Things are pricey, specifically like we'll look at uh eight character mounts to walk around with a, a full party of players a full party of players there's only one that you can buy but it's 42 dollars and then mounts for four player characters there's only one other as well that's 36 dollars but if we go all the way down to two player mounts there's 30 bucks a pop now the ff part of me wants to qualify these with Oh, they're account wide. You know, they have utility in FF. You can carry your friends around if they can't fly or if they're not able to reach certain locations or if they don't have mounts available. They have utility. I don't play Diablo 4, so there's probably arguments to be made with Diablo's mounts. It costs money to have a mount. No, 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 no. 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 You can get mounts in FF. You could play this game for 5,000 hours and never even know the mog station exists and you won't even you won't feel left out at all but for example for anyone curious mounts that you can get in this game without paying for them the main the basic chocobo the drought chocobo which you get by um giving anybody who signs up and pays for a sub your friend code the way that functions is essentially if they maintain their sub for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, you get a special item or a special type of currency in the game and you can trade that in for special items. But the Drought Chocobo is a two seater, so you can take a friend with you on this. It's gigantic. Obviously, it has the same flight animation as the basic one, but some others that you get in game that do not cost anything. You can get the Adamantois mount that is a giant one seat turtle. This is from the Gold Saucer, which is the gambling casino in the game that uses its own special currency that you can only get in the game. It has its own special flight animation. All the mounts have their own special flight an animations. You have the EX mounts that you can get that are all wholly unique. All of this is in game. None of it's on the Mog Station, like none of it's None of it's like pay to win. None of it's going to be something that you feel like you're getting cheated on. I feel like the problem with Diablo is if we go through the Mog Station real quick, these single seater mounts are at the cheapest uh, $12 for a single character mount. Dude, those mounts are odd. They're super cool. They're super fun. And the story you like for this one in particular is very, very fun. It's a Stormblood story, which I did off stream. We might do it again on stream at some point uh, on a different character because I don't know if I can do it through New Game Plus, but they're all super cool. A lot of the cool mounts are rewards for partaking in events or fighting EX trials, which are the harder versions of trials, but all of them are cool. These mounts aren't cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Hi rats. Welcome in. How's your day going? Man? Been a minute. How you been? I'm not going to deny that $24 is a lot for a mount. However, $24 for the fat cat, an account wide mount that I can use on any character as long as I'm signed into my Square Enix account. I don't think that's crazy. I don't think that's a crazy amount of money to ask for a live service game that cost me roughly quick math i'm 134 dollars a year um for my sub cost that is two games plus tax a year that i'm buying and this year alone i know i have logged over 800 hours on ff probably like i 
I have gotten my time monetarily and then some out of this game. But I think that's the primary driving force between Diablo 4's pricing being unbelievable and kind of off-putting versus FFs, where you, you play Diablo 4 and... I would presume there is a presence of the cash shop in that game somewhere. In FF14, this doesn't exist. There is no UI that points to the MOG station. You don't get a little message in chat that says, hey, there's a cell going on on the MOG station. You don't get anything like that. The only way you know this exists is if you see somebody with a mount like the fat cat and you message them and you go, hey, where did you get that? And they go, oh, I bought it on the MOG station. That's it. There's plenty of things to complain about with the MOG station. We can complain about the Songbird cheer set emotes, where we have the base one that comes with three emotes, jump, wave, and I think the last one's just called cheer. That is default color of red, blue, and red, blue, and yellow. And then they released a updated set for another $5 that is the same animations and they just changed the color of the lights and they're charging another five dollars for them but diablo recently introduced a horse that is and this is where i'm like slightly conflicted on it is the horse technically isn't 65 dollars you're getting seven thousand platinum which is their like special in-game currency that you can pay for so you're getting 70 dollars of premium currency plus a horse for 65 dollars i think the problem isn't that the horse is 65 dollars i think that's the easy narrative to push that i'm seeing a lot of outlets do i think the more scummy thing is that they're trying to drive premium currency purchases by bundling in a cool mount a mount that someone might think is cool and it's an okay mount it fits the art style i wouldn't get it because i don't like it but it is a cool mount the problem i think is that they're bundling it with 70 dollars of currency knocking off five dollars and including a mount that you can't get anywhere else. You can only get it if you buy the bundle. I've I've ne I don't think you can compare it to this. Like the most you could argue is the Aorzean Encyclopedia books that I I own volume 1 and 2. They're like $45 for a big hardcover book. And you get a code. So if you want Matoya's hat, you're going to have to go spend 45 plus dollars on a big hardcover lore book. I don't think that's a crazy ass. That's a bonus item. And you get a physical item that's really cool. Is anything 65 in FF? I don't believe so. The most expensive thing in the shop, I would wager, is the Lunar Whale for $42. And the five pack of Fantasias. For $65, that horse better do every dungeon gathering and crafting for me. See, that's the other thing. Like, what is the utility that this has? I would presume the utility is the same as every other mount. I would presume there is no difference in the utility. What does this horse do for $65? And that's the question that I'm thinking is the incorrect question to ask because the horse is at $65. This horse is, I don't know how much they want for the horse because you're paying $65 for $70 of premium currency and then you get a mount. What's the horse worth? Because by attaching it to the premium currency, you're saying it's worth $70. But you're putting it in a bundle for $65. And the quick outcome is, oh, it's a $65 horse. Because if you want the horse, you got to pay $65. Nobody wants the 70 platinum. They see the mount. So all this means is the premium currency stuff isn't worth it on its own to drive premium currency sales because people look at premium currency and they go, ah, $70, that's a lot. There's a horse though, so I pay 65 for the horse and I get currency that I can spend in the shop. So maybe then they're going to buy more currency in the future.
So if anything, it's a way to get people into the shop instead of just selling premium currency in the first place. Which I guess you could see as like a sacrificial mount of this mount could sell for 35, 40 bucks itself and people could would buy it. But I don't know. I don't know what the entire behind the scenes, you know, business strategy is with this decision. $45 isn't bad. Uh, $45 it's, isn't bad when you get multiple free mounts. Yeah, that's my entire point with like FF's Mog Station is you can pretend this doesn't exist. I'm sorry to flashbang you guys. It just has a light theme though. I cannot make it darker. Um, that's the thing. You, I don't, I don't think you could complain about the Mog Station as much as you could Diablo's monetization when you actually play both games. You can never be aware of this and your experience in FF14 is no different. It is the same thing. It is no different. But I feel like there are things in Diablo's monetization where your adventure is very much affected by not having something. And that doesn't mean it's mechanically affected, but it is maybe emotionally affected. Monetization doesn't have to be the experience, is I guess the point I'm trying to make by bringing FF in over and over into the conversation. Publishers don't understand that about video games. The experience doesn't need to be the monetizable ads because if the base experience without them is good, that experience incentivizes the monetizable ads to be considered by the consumer, in this case, the player. The only reason I considered spending $7 so I could do Play Dead was I saw Lollafells doing it and I thought it was funny. So I Fantasia'd into a Lollafell. I, I spent $10 to become a Lollafell so I could play Dead because their version of Play Dead is infinitely funnier to me than the one that I have. Granted, I fantasia so I spent another $10 to turn back into a Makode, but I still have Play Dead and I still actively use it for fun purposes and just interacting with people. The monetizable ad that I bought wasn't ever something I felt like I needed. It felt like I wanted it in a natural way. I never felt compelled to buy it out of a fear of missing out. I mean, technically you could argue that that wanting to join in is a fear of missing out, but I don't feel like it was malicious FOMO. Bundling a, a horse with $70 of premium currency and then marking it down $5 to 65 and trying to get people to buy it is such a cynical way to incentivize your player base that it's going to do nothing but breed ill will. I, I've said it many times and I'll always keep saying it. The moment there is a shop advertised in the game, like verbally or in world, is the moment that every decision in that game, it doesn't matter what part we're talking about, crafting, fashion, player choice, um, the dialogue system, the narrative itself, every aspect of that game is now going to be designed in in reference to that shop's existence with some goal of either keeping you playing so that you run into a message that says hey player go check out the shop or you will want to go to the shop in the first place